ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Folks, if you're going to get one of Lum and Abner's autographed pictures, you've got to act right away. There are so few left that the offer is being withdrawn after Sunday. Your request must be in the mail by then, by midnight Sunday. Now, here's what to do. Just write your name and address on the back of a wrapper from a half pound or larger size package of Horlick's malted milk. Then mail your wrapper to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are now listening. Have you got that? That's all there is to it. You'll receive one of Lum and Abner's big 8 by 10 photographs right away. This is a fine way of expressing your appreciation of Lum and Abner and your thanks to Horlicks for this program. But don't delay. Send in your wrapper just as soon as we get back from Pine Ridge. Lum and Abner don't want any of their friends to be disappointed. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, this should be one of the greatest days in the history of Pine Ridge. The whole community has been invited to gather down on the square in front of Dick Huddleston's store to witness the unveiling of the statue of that illustrious citizen Lum Edwards, King of the Hogs, which he himself is presenting to the city. Lum has spent some little time preparing an elaborate presentation speech. And as we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find him in the midst of his oration. Listen. And the harp strings of memory strikes a tender chord as I stand up here on this platform today on what I believe to be the greatest occasion in the history of Pine Ridge. As I gaze out over that sea of shiny faces, it brings recollections of my childhood when as a barefoot boy, me and two hound dogs followed my old father as he drove over yon hill in a kibbered wagon. I pulled one end of a cross-cut saw that cut down the first tree that was ever put into a log house in this part of the country. And when the first schoolhouse was built in Cloverleaf Township, who was the first scholar that entered them doors and set himself down on the front seat? Who was a little eight-year-old lad that knew that he'd have to have an education to make a success of himself? Little Lum Edwards, plowing in the fields and splitting rails by day and learning my lessons by the light of a candle by night. I kept climbing the uh, ladder of success rung by rung until today. Today, the greatest event of my life, we have gathered here to dedicate a monument in my honor. A monument that will stand here through the ages as an inspiration to the generations to come. A guiding light, a star for the young folks of this generation to hitch their wagon to. And that's why I'm presenting this statuary to you good citizens today, to show my appreciation for all that you did for me. I've had ever honor a body could wish for bestowed upon me by you good people. For 19 years, I've served you as your justice of the peace, dealing out justice like Solomon did in his day. For 11 years, I've served the community as president of the school board. During that time, ladies and gentlemen, we've made lots of improvements in our local school system. In them 11 short years, we've not only put in two new blackboards, but we patched the roof twice and built new steps in front of the schoolhouse so that a scholar nowadays can go uh, clean through the sixth reader and out into the world, proud to say that he's a graduate of dear old Cloverleaf School District number 187. And now, as the greatest honor of them all, you folks have gathered here today to witness and become a part of the ceremony of unveiling the statuary of me, Lum Edwards, King of the Hogs. My life's ambition has now been realized. I'm proud to be called a citizen of Pine Ridge. Pine Ridge, the garden spot of the Washitals. Pine Ridge, the queen city of this great state. The greatest commonwealth of the Union, whose star shines out in our old flag like the brightest orb on the most celestial night. And now, my young friends, as you go out into life to grasp the skirts of happy chance, May your stream of life unruffled run, and a rosy bloom without a thorn. I thank you. All right, snatch the sheet off the statuary. Let the folks see it. Uh Uh-huh. Nothing. That's that's a cute unveil a monument. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, how's it sounding, Abner? 
Why, a lot, I reckon, huh? It ought to. That's a ninth time that you said it to me today. Yeah, I believe I got it down shorter pat now, ain't I? Yeah, it sounded like you might have swallowed a dictionary from the amount of big words you're using in it so long. Yeah. <laughs> I, I jumped a track there three or four times. I couldn't follow you. Well, I know a lot more big words if I could find a place to slip them in there. Like monstrosity. There's one I'd love to use the worst way, but I couldn't find no place to put it in there. Put uh, what in there? Monstrosity. What's that? That's a word. I know it, but what does it mean? Oh, I, I don't know. That's... One reason I couldn't find no place to put it in it. Monstrosity. I might could say there, we've gathered here today to witness the unveiling of this monstrosity. I'd put it in there. Yeah, I reckon so. Well, let's hurry up and get on over there, Lom. I'm sure they'll have all that barbecue yet before I get there. Well, we can't go over there till we hear from Grandpa. He said he'd step in Dick Huddleston's store there and call me on the telephone when they got ready for us. And I wish he'd hurry up so that I could take off these clothes. I never felt so ashamed of myself in my life. Ashamed of yourself? Yeah, ashamed of myself. A man my age running around here with knee breeches on. Feel like some youngin' about 11 year old. Why, you look nice, Abner. Look awful nice. Happy, Frank. Happy, Frank. All the men a hundred years ago wore them silk knee pants and them silk blouses that way. Except they never wore boots with them like you got there. Well, now, I ain't going to have my legs a showing. I'll tell you that right now. Trying to get me to wear a pair of Elizabeth stockings. Huh. Why did you get me an outfit like that in yours, Lum? I wouldn't mind it so bad if I had a long velvet robe like that and a hat with a plume in it. Yeah. <laughs> it is sort of a becoming, ain't it? I grant it, I... Bound you there, eyes will bug out over there again. They see you, you leading me up there on that white horse, me setting up there at this outfit on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's going to be a big surprise to them, all. <laughs> I, I bet there's half of them that won't know you, Lon. Yeah. Wish you had a cornet or something that you could sort of... Had a what? Cornet. You could blow the bugle calls. And stuff. Oh, a horn. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Ought to be carrying a big banner with, uh, well, King of the Hogs rode across it. That'd be nice. Well, they all know that you're that anyway, Lum. Yeah. It's wrote there on a the statuary, too. <laughs> I grannies, I can't hardly wait to see that thing. Wish they'd hurry up and call it. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to look nice down there, you know. Oh, yeah. Big monument standing there overlooking the town. Yeah. Wish now that I'd have went in with you on it, Lum, so I could be up there, too, have mm. a statuary of me. Well, as soon as I end, boy, invest all this money for us, Abner, make millionaires out of us. First thing we'll do is take part of the money and have a big statue where you standing right there beside me. Well, good. <laughs> we'll have another big ceremony just like this one. Have everybody in town down there. Uh, you reckon that the lodge will let us borrow these uniforms again, Mom? Well, I don't know. I had a terrible hard job talking Moe's moots into it this time. He said these weren't supposed to go out of the lodge hall. See, they're part of their secret work or something like that. Uh huh. Is he the head man in the lodge, Moe's? No, no, no. He's just the Grand Supreme Royal Chancellor. There's four or five ahead of him, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I know that I'd love to join that thing if you get to wear clothes like them that you've got on there. Yeah. After I seen this, I told Mose right then that I'd love to get into it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, reckon who wears that outfit that you've got on there, Lon? Well, I asked Mose about that, but he, he said it was again the rules to say who wore it. Why, well, huh? Yeah. They're awful close mouthed about that going on in the lodge. Uh, looks like it just about fits Squire skin. Yeah, just about. Yeah, yeah just about. I uh, know he's one of the main officers. Yeah, well, I had a notion that he was. Wait a minute. Huh? Wait a minute. Look, Your Honor. Your Honor comes Grandpappy now. Yeah, yeah. Must be time for us to march over <laughs> well, there. Well, good. Come on, get on a horse, Lum. Let's go. <laughs> uh, Granny, I never was so nervous in my life. No. <laughs> you just don't know how happy I am today. This is by far the biggest day of my life. Well, come on, hurry. Well, come on. Let me. Get this sword stropped around me here. And yeah, Grandpap's in a terrible hurry. You can tell that, Mom. Yeah, I bound you. They're getting impatience for me over there, calling for me. <laughs> Are they ready for us, Grandpap? Well, for the land sake, Abner, if you don't look aside with that rigging on, <laughs> and whereabouts is Lom? Why, there he stands right there. Well, I sworn to goodness I never would have known you, Lom. Never would have known you. <laughs> I'll be ready in just a minute, Grandpap. Is the crowd getting impatient for me to make my speech? Well, that's, uh, that's what I come over here for, Lum. One reason I never called you. Uh, uh, 
Nobody showed up over there except Dick Huddleston and Squire Scamp and Cedric. Nobody showed up? No, and Clay Foster's got all that barbecue cooked up down there, and nobody there to eat it. I didn't know what you one did with it. Thought I better tell you before you rode that white horse over there. Well, I'll be dead blamed. Well, I'm, it just looks like. Oh, what's the matter? Nothing. I just thought I'd sit down here a minute. I think we better better take these clothes on back over to the lodge hall, Abner. If you don't mind, Abner, I wish you'd take that white horse back on over to Caleb Wee, huh? I think I'll go on over home for a while. Poor Lump. Seems to be the only one who really appreciates his outstanding talents. Ladies and gentlemen, we still have a minute or two left, and I'm going to use it to let you hear what Mrs. Fern E. Shields of Anderson, Indiana, says in a recent letter to Lemon Abner. She writes, We think of you every single evening, and I believe everyone else does too. We really think that you're fine. Now, I want to tell you what Horlicks did for my baby son. When he was three months old, we had occasion to give him a bottle. Well, then our troubles really began. Nothing we tried agreed with the little fellow. Nothing, that is, until we tried Horlicks. Well, from then on, it was easy and plain sailing. We continued to use it until he was two years old. And he certainly is a wonderful baby. He's so contented. He never cries and is the picture of health, as everyone says when they see him. And we can never, never thank Horlicks enough. Well, thank you, Mrs. Shields. We're always happy to receive letters like yours. We feel that by reading them over the air, thousands of other mothers may learn about the wonderful results obtained by the use of Horlicks as a food for infants. Don't forget, folks, this is your last chance to get an autographed picture of Lum and Abner. The offer expires midnight Sunday. Your request must be in the mail by then. So write your name and address on the back of a wrapper from a half pound or larger size package of Horlick's malted milk and send it to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are now listening. They'll send you a photograph right away. This is Carlton Brickert speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlick's, who now bid you all good night and good health.